Hi guys, welcome to my unboxing video of my um, Aldi Ferex sliding meter saw. Um, I bought this uh, online off Aldi um, because I didn't think the special offer, uh, the um, weekly offer was uh, valid anymore. But when I went to my local Aldi, I saw they were in stock, uh, but I still had to wait a few days for delivery, um, which was unfortunate. But anyway, it's uh, it's arrived now. and. Uh, can't wait to uh, put it through its paces. Uh, I think I'm going to start with the unboxing. Um, anyway, for, uh, for uh, op opening the box, I'm going to be using this uh, Ganzo 722. Um, it's like a, I don't know if you can see that. It's a budget Chinese knife. Uh, I got a fast tech. It's a copy of a lion's deal. Um, and, uh, it's, it's quite a good knife, I've, you know, I've, I've put it through its paces, um, battening wood and stuff like that in um, uh, while camping. So it comes in a box and it's got this leaflet, uh, which is a delivery note. Uh, just you know how to return it and things like that in it um, we can see there's a, a dust collector bag manual and the actual um, main saw the main body of the saw uh, let me get this out of the box put it on the table and then uh, I'll see what else is inside this is the saw out of the box. The only the only two things were the in in the box is the instruction manual and the dust bag, uh, which were in the top, um, and then there was just a piece of foam underneath to stop it knocking about. Um, it's held together by these two cable ties uh, for transit. It's got the more than 10 foot, maybe 12 foot. Okay, so let's uh, spin the saw around and show you. Uh, this is the table that I'm going to be uh, mounting it on. Um, what's more budget than free? So this uh, this uh, table was um, my cousin was throwing out. Uh, she had it in her flat in London, and uh, she didn't want it anymore. It's a I believe an IKEA one uh, made from wood. I'm gonna have to uh, do something to strengthen it by putting uh, four by twos across the bottom um, and making you know like a shelf at the bottom. And I think that'll give it enough stability not to rock about uh, for when I'm making cuts. So it must be locked in position somehow. There we go. Um, personally, I would never normally do this, uh, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to quickly uh, run through the manual. 
Uh, so there's uh, a load of pictures um, with numbers. So you know when it refers to something in in the paragraph, uh, you can know what it's referring to. Um, you've got some safety information, uh, introduction, and then a description of the device um, and everything it can do. Oh, I think this uh, refers to the photos in the pullout. Um, and then packing list and how to unpack it and safety regulations. Uh, I, I've not I've not read this, but um, I think it would be the same for any saw if you've used the saw before. And then, oh, that's a it just explains. Uh, the operation of the machine and what I was interested in oh, we've got an exploded diagram of the parts which could be useful what I was more interested in were the specs which are on this page so it just uh, talks about the motor, um, the power of the motor, 1700 uh, watts. Uh, the speeds, it's got two gears. I'm not sure how you would change gears, but, but we'll find out. Uh, at 32,000 and uh, 3,250, revs per minute. Uh, and then the specs of the blade, 216 millimeters by 30 millimeters. Uh, and it's a 40 tooth blade that comes with it. Um, and then just some, you know, sizes of uh, your saw saw width at forty five degrees, saw width at ninety degrees, um, and oh look, it's got a laser as well, and it's got the output of the laser. So I was wondering what this thing here was. This must be the this must be the laser. So uh, yeah, it's got it's got quite high end features. Um, anyway, let's start putting it through its paces. And uh, like the main job which I, which I bought this saw for uh, was doing cross cuts and doing mitered uh, cross cuts. Uh, and the reason I wanted to do mitered cross cuts is for um, making cross braces. For example, you know, on this um, table, if I wanted to put a cross brace across this way, and and I wanted to put a, a lap joint where they join then I would need a, a mitered lap joint at 45 degrees or whichever angle I wanted to put it at and you know I can do that with this saw so it's quite feature heavy for a 99 pound saw I can see straight out the box it's not really ready to go while sliding it backwards and forwards I can't really do it with one hand I can hear a grinding noise um, which leads me to believe that these need lubing up and they've absolutely got no oil on them so to tackle that um, grinding problem I'm going to have to put WD-40 or some other sort of grease on them the lock is here to raise it up And it's got an adjustment for the height, which is really going to be nice for making lap joints because you, you lowered that slightly. So this height adjustment was one I was hoping it would have um, because uh, at, uh, with my Aldi table saw, uh, even though I can make cross cuts, and uh, I can make lap joints with it. Um, the height of the, because the height is not fixed on the um, table saw, I'll show you my table saw here, because the height isn't fixed on the table saw uh, of the blade, it, you kind of, you can adjust it, but you can't fix it in. It creeps lower and lower through a cut. So uh, with this one, I'm hoping this will, uh, I will be able to do my 
cross cuts um, for lap joints. If you can see there's like a distance and difference. Uh, and that's like one feature which I, I wanted in a saw. Um, uh, and it comes with a, a clamp for holding holding your stock down. And it's got quite a lot of adjustments and points uh, for adjusting. Um, we've got a fence uh, here, which also adjusts for when you're doing mitre cuts. So uh, how I'm going to um, um, wire this up is I'm going to put the plug for the saw through this Titan Hoover. Um, and then the hoover, when you put the hoover on setting 2, it turns on and off with the saw. And then I'm going to uh, put the, the uh, inlet pipe for the hoover onto a dust collection port on the saw. By using um, my mortise gauge, um, I've marked, I don't know if that shows up on the video, I've marked the uh, midpoint of this uh, if I were for making lap joints for you know for exactly the reason of making lap joints uh, on this uh, scrap of four by two and then for the purpose of this video I've just um, highlighted that a mark which I made with the with the with the gauge um, with a pencil uh, and then I set my blade to the same height so the stop over here I set it to the same height as halfway through this uh, 4x2 to make the lap joint. I have got a little bit of a reservation about um, lubing this uh, pipe, this, sorry, uh, these rails. Uh, I've got, because, you know, wood, wood uh, dust, sawdust can stick to it, but I really just can't live with that grinding noises. It's quite horrible, so let's just uh, give it a bit of a spray. Uh, I'm not going to use um, the copper slip. I'm just going to use uh, this, you know, cheap lubrication oil from Aldi. And straight away, it's much better. It's more of a bearing singing noise rather than the scraping noise. So um, first gear and second gear are selected by this switch and this is the main power switch and when you turn the main power switch on it turns the laser guide on as well. So I didn't have another scrap piece of 4x2, so I used this uh, piece of 1x1.5 just to make this lap joint, just to demonstrate the kind of cuts I wanted uh, to make on, on uh, this machine. Um, and, you know, the cuts are very usable, very clean. And they'll be perfect for you know constructing uh, stuff in the in the workshop
Another thing I've noticed is even with the Hoover connected to do the dust collection, there's a lot of dust which is coming out. Um, and I would definitely recommend using some sort of uh, respiration filter. Oh, you know, good luck uh, getting hold of one nowadays. <laughs> Everyone seems to be using them for um, for uh, preventing uh, the disease. Uh, opted for this as my stop block uh, to space it out. Piece of machined one by one. So just to uh, conclude my unboxing video, um, first of all, I just wanted to um, point out, I don't think I made it obvious in the video, and it might have been a little bit misleading. Um, after I made the cut, I actually cleaned it up with a chisel to, by just running my chisel diagonally across the ridges. Um, I didn't use a sander and I didn't use a planer. Um, personally, I think you shouldn't use a sander and planer. Sometimes you have to because you haven't made your cuts deep enough and then you just need to take a fraction of a millimeter off so you know you can run it over a, run a belt sander over it or run it over a belt sander um, and you know that kind of but personally i think it should have the ridges there it's like you know when you're painting something you kind of scratch scratch a key into the paintwork and then you apply the new paint and i think with gluing up it's the same if, if there's a key it's slightly better um for 99 pounds or 99.99 at aldi um i think it's still available online uh when I, while i'm filming this it's an absolute amazing machine absolute amazing you know it just you know the thought of what you could do with compound miters uh you know you can make like dovetail dovetail style lap joints you know with, with the compound miters it's just such an exciting concept um the laser was a real nice surprise. Uh, I didn't expect there to be a laser guide on a ninety-nine pound machine. I know you know lasers are cheap, and but I just didn't expect to, didn't expect to see it on this. Um, like with my evolution, I, all I've been doing is kind of bring the blade down to my pencil line and you know shuffle it along and then lock it in with my hand. And uh, but having the laser is a real nice touch. Um, this is a very very loud machine, extremely loud machine. Um, I took my ear defenders off uh, and put them on my daughter while she was videoing uh, while I was doing the cuts because I just couldn't do it one handed, uh, you know, cutting and and then video it as well. I just couldn't do it. So uh, I, I pulled her in, uh, gave her some uh, you know, eye defenders and ear defenders and uh, my ears are still ringing and that was probably over an hour ago. Uh, so definitely recommend you get some ear defenders with it. Uh, the dust collection is not the best. Um, my evolution machine, even though it's just like a smaller, cheaper machine, all the dust seems to come out the back end. If you put a hoover on the back, it, there's, you get hardly any dust coming forwards, uh, whereas it's not the case with this. This uh, Maybe it's the way it's designed or the, the, there might be you know something in the port that doesn't allow the, um, the, all the dust to uh, extract out the back or for whatever reason, um, you know, you definitely need some... Uh, aspirate aspirator or you know like a uh, uh, aspirator filter or you know whatever they call it um you know, the same kind of people are using wearing to supermarkets nowadays um if you have a table saw this is the perfect companion so tables like the aldi table saw will do um will rip boards for days for days and days it will rip boards and um this is perfect for doing the cross cuts because with the Aldi table saw, the, the mitre sledge thing has just has too much play in it uh, to do, you know, reliable cuts. You can do them, um, you know, you run your hand forwards and backwards and it's, it's, but it's not the best. And, you know, you get some quite dirty cuts um, and, you know, as well as the cross cuts, you know, you can do mitered cuts and, you know, the possibilities of mitered cuts is just very exciting um so my recommendation is you know if you if you need a uh, if you've already got a table saw for um for ripping boards and then you need something else to do your cross cuts buy this and you know you can also do your do your compound uh, miters or just normal miters so yeah it's definitely a highly recommended machine um from 
what I've seen of it. Um, obviously, you know, during this lockdown period, I'm going to be putting it through through its paces. Um, I want to uh, make some racking and stuff in the garage and kind of tidy the tidy the workshop up a little bit. So I'll definitely be putting it through its paces. So you know, let's uh, uh, you know watch this space for more videos. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching my video, and uh, hopefully, I'll see you next time.